everyone! In today's video we are going to talk about different ways to count probabilities and likelihoods. So we're going to be focusing on permutations and combinations. We'll first learn how to apply the fundamental counting principle, then we will look at some problems looking at whether or not order matters um, in real world counting, and then use permutations and combinations depending on whether uh, order matters. So for the first part, we need to talk about the fundamental counting principle. The fundamental counting principle says that if there are a certain number of ways you can do one thing and another certain one way, number of ways that you could do another thing, if you want to know the possible total possible number of ways to do both in a sequence, you multiply those two numbers together. So let's look at a few examples. Um, we all hopefully know that there are 26 letters in the alphabet and that there are 10 single digits. So that's one or zero, one, two, three, all the way up to nine. So that's 10 numbers total there. So let's say we are trying to make a student ID that is five characters long. That means there are five spots that we have to make choices in the student ID. It consists of three letters, so I'm going to put L's underneath these blanks for letters, and two digits. I'm going to put a D on each of those to label which ones are the digits. How many student IDs are possible? So because we have uh, 26 letters in the alphabet, that means for this first spot, there are 26 possible choices that we could put in that spot. There are also 26 choices for the other two spots that have letters in them. The digit spots, we have 10 choices, the numbers 0 through 9 in that first spot, and then we get to choose again the number 0 through 9 for that second spot. So the fundamental counting principle says you can multiply that together, 26 times 26 times 26 times 10 times 10, and whatever that product is, in this case it's 1,757,600, that's how many possible, in this case, student ID combinations we would be able to put together. So the second example says in a local restaurant, there are three choices for appetizer. So for this first part, this first choice, your appetizer, you get three choices. For your entree, you get seven choices. For dessert, you get four choices. And for your drink, you get five choices. In how many ways can a customer order a full meal? That means we multiply together all of those individual possibilities with choices, and when we do three times seven times four times five, we get 420, and that's the total number, number of um, possible um, choices that we could be making. Uh, all right, let's look at another example that gets a little bit uh, more complex. Uh, calculate the number of possible license plates using the letter, 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 number, number, number format. So there are six choices here. We have a letter, a letter, a letter, a digit, a digit, a digit, which can represent three letters of the alphabet followed by three digits or numbers. So this one's pretty similar to example number one, where we have letters, we have digit choices, we multiply them all together, and that gives us our total number of choices. You'll notice, uh, let's see, this time, because we're multiplying by another 10, we're going to get 17,576,000. All right, so we have a bigger number than we had before because we had another choice to um, multiply in. Now, here's where we have to be careful. If we want to do that same license plate, but this time the letters of the alphabet cannot repeat. So that means then when we're doing our choices, this first letter that we are making a choice about, we have 26 options to choose from. We can choose any letter we want. But because the second letter cannot repeat whatever we choose for the first one, that means we only have 24 five choices for that one because we've already used one letter. And when we do the third letter, we've already used two of the 26 letters, so that means there's only 24 letters to choose from. Now in this example, it doesn't say anything about the digits not being able to be repeated, so we're still going to put 10 
in those digit spots. And we are going to have a smaller number than we had a moment ago when we allowed for repetitions to happen. In this case where repetitions cannot happen, we only have 15,600,000 choices when we plug that into the calculator. So still a lot of choices, but not as many choices. Okay, so let's talk about our next way of calculating likelihoods. Um, there are, there's a counting method called a permutation, and this is going to be a really important vocabulary word for you to learn. A permutation is when you have a set of objects that you are putting in a particular order. Order matters with permutations. So let's think about an example of that. If I have the letters a, B, and C. And I want to count how many possible ways can I order these three letters. I can say A, B, C, but I could also swap the placement of the B and C and have A, C, B. And that's different. This is one way to order the letters. This is a different way to order those letters. I could also put the B in the front and then A, C. That's a third way. I could put the B, but then the C and the A. There are lots of different ways, right? In total, there are six ways that I could order those letters. So that means there are six permutations or six different ways that those letters could be put together. Now, um, you do have a formula that you can use to calculate permutations, um, and that's what this is right here. This exclamation point is called a factorial, and what that means is you start at whatever the number is and multiply in descending order, all of the numbers lower than it all together. So in this example, you have four factorial. So that means, whoops, that means four times three times two times one. You multiply all of the numbers, all of the um, whole numbers lower than it until you get down to one. And you always stop at one because if you multiply by zero, it's going to be zero. So four times three times two times one that's 24. So 4 factorial is 24. So in this formula, you're asked to figure out how many numbers are in the set. N is the number of objects. Take a factorial and then divide that by the numbers of objects and how many you're taking at a time and do that factorial. Now that's a whole lot going on in there. Uh, we actually this year aren't going to have to use that formula because Desmos does uh, permutations for us. The reason that I'm showing you this is because this notation format is going to be really important depending on what kind of calculator you're plugging into, either Desmos or into um, a graphing calculator, for example. The things that I want you to notice about the formula are that you have an uppercase P, that stands for permutation. As I mentioned a moment ago, the N, the first number, is the total number of objects that you have to work with. And then the R is how many of them you're taking. So in the ABC example that we just did, we would be taking a permutation if there are n objects, there are three objects, A, B, and C. And then R is how many of them we're taking. Uh, so in this case, we were taking all three letters. So we would choose three. And then that's what we would be looking for, a permutation of three objects taken three at a time. So let's look at how to do this in Desmos now with this um, next example. It says eight women are competing in the final round of the Olympic ice skating competition. That means our total number n is eight. In how many different ways can three of the women finish first, second, and third, winning the gold, silver, and bronze medals respectively? So we're choosing three of these eight. And the reason that I underlined first, second, and third is because this is why order matters it's going to be a different result if different people finish first, second, and third, right? Order matters when you're racing or competing in some way. So because of that ordering that's happening, we're going to take a permutation of eight objects, three at a time. And this notation format is how you're going to show your work, and it's what we're going to be putting into Desmos. So let's go over and look at the Desmos side of things. 
Okay, so when I'm in Desmos, I'm going to open up my keyboard and go to functions. And inside of functions, you are going to have in the stats section, because we're in statistics, these two buttons down here that we're going to use a lot. We're going to use the permutation right now. Notice that this is one of those formats that you just saw. It has the N for the total number of objects, the P and the R. So I'm going to click that button and it's going to give me a set of parentheses. The N and the R are reminding you here the order that you need to put in your possibilities. So I'm going to put in an eight, then I'm gonna put in a comma, and then I'm going to put in a three because there are eight people racing and we are looking for the top three. So you'll notice as soon as I tell the um, computer what sort of permutation I wanna take, it goes ahead and calculates it for me. So I don't have to use that formula at all today. So for our answer here, there are 336 different ways that eight women competing in this final round can place in first, second, and third. So now let's look at a slightly different question. In how many different ways can the women finish the competition, assuming no ties? So we're still working with eight women, but this time we don't care just about first, second, and third. We care about how all of the women are finishing the competition. So that means we're choosing all eight in this case. So I'm going to go back to my Desmos. I'm going to choose functions. Again, we're under stats. Order matters here because we're finishing a race. We're going to choose a permutation. And then I'm going to do eight comma, and I want all eight this time. So I have 40,320. That was a permutation of eight possible objects. I'm choosing from all eight of them with a result of 40,320 possible ways that they could finish the race. It's a lot of possibilities. Okay, let's look at another example. The board of directors for a company has 12 members. So N is equal to 12 in this one. One member is the president, another is the vice president, another is the secretary, and another is the treasurer. So notice here that we have four separate jobs, just like we in the last one had three separate positions. So this is going to be a permutation. How many ways can the positions be assigned? Well, we have four positions to fill, so we're going to do a permutation of 12 objects taken four at a time. We go back over to Desmos. We put in our permutation. Uh, what did we just say? 12 objects taken four at a time. And our final answer there is 11,880. Lots of possible ways for those four people to be selected from a group of 12. Okay, so those examples that we just did all had um, placements where the order matters. Sometimes when we are looking at possibilities, we don't actually care about the order. We just want to group from the bigger group, a subgroup, if you will. So we're going to call that a combination. So this is the other important vocabulary word today. And in a combination, order does not matter. So if I go back to my letters, A, B, and C, if I'm taking a combination of A, B, and C, then I'm just looking for a group of the letters. Um, so A, B, and C is the same thing as A, C, B, B, A, C, B, C, A, C, A, B. The order doesn't matter. It's still the same group of letters. So in this case, I would be taking a combination instead of a permutation because I don't care about the order that the group is collected, who's first, who's second, who's third, so on. So we again have a formula for this one, uh, but I want you to notice again, this uh, format is going to be more helpful to us. You do not need to use the formula this year. So let's look at an example for these combinations. A board of directors has a company, uh, for a company has 12 members. So we still have a total number of 12. A committee of three members will be chosen to examine cost savings. How many possible committees could be formed? So we're choosing a group of three from that group of 12. They don't have special jobs or anything like that. It doesn't matter who gets picked first versus who gets picked second or third. Whoever gets picked is gonna be on the same committee. So because of that, that's a combination. We're doing a combination where 12 objects are taken 
three at a time. When we go over to decimals, we are this time in our functions and stats going to choose the NCR. This is the combination option. It's set up exactly the same way. So I'm going to put in my total number, a comma, and then how many I wanted to take. I've forgotten on this one. How many was it? Three? Um, I think so. Yeah. Um, so if we're choosing from 12, a group of three, that's 220. So there are 220 possible ways to form that group of three if we don't care which order the people get selected in. The next example says from a class of 20 students, how many groups of five students can the teacher form? So we have 20 students total. We are looking to choose groups of five, taken five at a time. The groups don't have special jobs or roles, or it doesn't matter if you get picked first versus second, you're still part of that group. So this is a combination, not a permutation, where we're doing from 20, selecting at a rate of five per time. So we're gonna go back one more time into Desmos. We're gonna choose combination. We have 20, choosing five. Our final answer, we've got it there. So we have 15,504 possible combinations. Okay, so in this video, we briefly talked about the fundamental counting principle where we draw the blanks and all that. Um, we talked about figuring out if order does or doesn't matter for a particular real world situation. And then based on that order mattering or not mattering, uh, choosing permutation or combination. Remember for permutation, that's when it matters. Combination, it's just a group, it doesn't matter at all. Go ahead and try the now you try problems.